1.1.8 Procedures as Black Box Abstractions Square root is our first example of a process defined by a set of mutually defined procedures. Notice that the definition of square root iter is recursive, that is, the procedure is defined in terms of itself. The idea of being able to define a procedure in terms of itself may be disturbing. It may seem unclear how such a circular definition could make sense at all, much less specify a well-defined process to be carried out by a computer. This will be addressed more carefully in section 1.2. But first, let's consider some other important points illustrated by the square root example. Observe that the problem of computing square roots breaks up naturally into a number of sub-problems, how to tell whether a guess is good enough, how to improve the guess, and so on. Each of these tasks is accomplished by a separate procedure. The entire square root program can be viewed as a cluster of procedures, shown in figure 1.2, that mirrors the decomposition in of the problem into sub-problems. So square root is into square root iter, good enough goes into improve, improve needs average, good enough needs square, and absolute value. The importance of this decomposition strategy is not simply that one is dividing the program into parts. After all, we could take any large programs and divide it into parts. The first 10 lines, the next 10 lines, the next 10 lines, and so on. Rather, it is crucial that each procedure accomplishes an identifiable task that can be used as a module in defining other procedures. For example, when we define good enough procedure in the terms of square, we were able to regard the square procedure as a black box. We are not at the moment concerned with the how the procedure computes the result, only with the fact it computes the square. The details of how the square is computed can be suppressed, to be considered at a later time. Indeed, as far as the good enough procedure is concerned, square is not quite a procedure, but rather an abstraction of a procedure, a so-called procedural abstraction. At this level of abstraction, any procedure that computes with square is equally good. Thus, considering only the values they return, the following two procedures for squaring a number should be indistinguishable. Each takes a numerical argument and produces the square of that number as the value. So, to find the square of square x is multiply x and x, or to find the square of x to be the exponent double the log of x, or to find double x to be x plus x. So, a procedure definition should be able to suppress details. The users of the procedure may not have written the procedure themselves, but may have obta obtained it from another programmer as a black box. A user should not need no to know how the procedure is implemented in order to use it. Local names. One detail of a procedure's implementation that should not matter to the user of the procedure is the implementer's choice of names for the procedure's formal parameters. Thus, the following procedures should not be distinguishable. So describe the square of x to be x times x, or define the square of y to be y times y. This principle, that the meaning of a procedure should be independent of the parameter names used by its author, seems on the surface to be self-evident, but its consequences are profound. The simplest consequence is that the parameter names of a procedure must be local to the body of the procedure. For example, we use square in the definition of good enough in our square root procedure. To find good enough, guess of x is less than the absolute value, minus square of x and x, and point, divided by 0 0.0001. Okay. The intention of the author of good enough is to determine if the square of the first argument is within a given tolerance of the second argument. We see that the author of good enough used the name guess to refer to the first argument x and, and x to refer to the second argument. The argument of square is guess. If the author of square used x as above to refer to that argument, we see that the x in good enough must be different than the x must be a different x than the one in square. Running the procedure square must not affect the value of x that is used by good enough because that value of x may be needed by good enough after square is done computing. If the parameters were not local to the bodies of their respective procedures, then the parameter x and square could be confused with the parameter x and good enough, and the behavior of good enough would depend upon which version of square we used. Thus, square would not be the black box we desired. A formal parameter of a procedure has a very special role in the procedure definition, in that it doesn't matter what name the formal parameter has. Such a name called a bound variable, and we say that the procedure def such a name is called a bound variable. We say that the procedure definition binds its formal parameters. The meaning of a procedure definition is unchanged if a bound variable is consistently renamed through the definition. 
If a variable is not bound, we say that it is free. The set of expressions for which a binding defines a name is called the scope of that name. In a procedure definition, the bound variables declared as the formal parameters of the procedure have the body of the procedure as their scope. In the definition of good enough above, guess and x are bound to variables, but less than, minus and abs, and square are free. The meaning of good enough should be independent from of the names we choose for guess and x, as long as they are distinct from less than, minus, abs, less than, minus, abs, and square. If we renamed guess to abs, we have introduced a bug by capturing the variable abs. It would have changed from free to bound. The meaning of good enough is not independent of the names of its free variables, however. It surely depends on the fact, external to this definition, that the symbol abs names a procedure for computing the absolute value of a number. Good enough will compute a different function if we submit cosine for abs in its definition. Internal definitions and block structure. We have one kind of name isolation available to us so far. Formal parameters of a procedure are local to the body of the procedure. The square root program illustrates another way in which we would like to control the use of names. The existing program consists of separate procedures. The problem with this program is that the only procedure that is improved to the use, important to the use of square root is square root. The other procedures, square root, iterate, good enough, and improve, only clutter up their minds. They might not define any other procedure called good enough as part of another program to work together with the square root program because square root needs it. For example, the problem is this, they may not define any other procedure called good enough as part of another program to work together with the square root program because square root needs it. The problem is especially severe in the construction of large systems by many separate programmers. For example, in the construction of a large library of numerical procedures, many numerical functions are computed as successive approximations, and thus might have procedures named good enough and improve as auxiliary procedures. We would like to localize the sub-procedures, hiding them inside square root, so that square root could coexist with other successive approximations, each having its own private good enough procedure. To make this possible, we allow a procedure to have internal definitions that are local to that procedure. For example, in the square root problem, we can write define square root of x, good enough, guess x, less than, define, improve, define, if, guess. Okay, so such nesting of definitions is called block structure. Is basically the right solution to the simplest name packaging problem. But there is a better idea lurking here. In addition to internalizing the definitions of auxiliary procedures, we can simplify them. Since x is bound in the definition of square root and procedures good enough, improve, and square iter, which are defined internally to square root, are in the scope of x, thus it is not necessary to pass x explicitly to each of these procedures. Instead, we allow x to be a free variable in the internal definitions, as shown below. Then x gets its value from the argument with which the enclosing procedure square root is called. This discipline is called lexical scoping. So to find the square root of x, find good enough and guess, absolute value square root guess of x, to find improve and guess, average guess. Hmm. So, okay, so up here x is given to each of them. Down here it's just not. Okay. We will use block structure extensively to help us break up large programs into tractable pieces. The idea of block structure originated with the programming language ALGOL 60. It appears in most advanced programming languages and is an, um, and is an important tool for helping to organize the construction of large programs.